Okay, well, I know the, um, there's probably nobody who's going to watch this movie, and the reason why I know is because I'm getting the feeling that I am in hell. Um, you're probably going to say, well, how do you know you're in hell? One way you know is any time you do anything, by the way, the reason why I wrote on my hands, notes. Um, there's a song I want to sing, which is a Who song. This one is a comedian I want to put on my website. This is my website. This is the hats. I got these at Vistaprint. They're really, uh, it's really, it cost me $120. I get three hats and, uh, and 25 bottle openers. Um, it's actually, it's a, it's a steal, but anyhow, um, if anybody watches this video, it'll be a miracle, but, um, um, I don't believe in miracles happen in, at least not in my universe. So, um, if anybody gets anything, it's something that the, that Satan and his devils are letting through to the rest of the world because evidently I am in hell. Um, how I can tell is that basically anything I say basically never makes it out to anyone on the internet um, and would never become popular in the world. Um, they're basically kind of saying to me, you're, bit, you're barking, you're like a dog barking in the car, so you're really just, nothing's getting through. And they do this by throwing stuff, kind of giving me little signs here and there, and I can just kind of draw my own conclusion. And it's taken me long enough, and um, I say, well, I'm like, a, I'm like a, you're training me like a dog, and, and you're like, you know, anything you say, um, you can get me to bark, and, and they can... They can give me certain things that I'll always respond to, you know, like somebody doing something stupid. So I have to do a video and throw it up on YouTube. And so they're just trying to get me to like do tricks for them until I die. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's novel and you like the novelty and I like the novelty. Uh, and they're coming to the realization that uh, giving me all these signs were really not very good because now I'm just going to be kind of a pain in the ass and so they're basically saying you're a jerk why are you holding us up why don't you kill yourself things like that and you know they don't consider me be like a dog they consider me be like a turtle you know a turtle that just doesn't respond to things quick enough and i'm just like well dude i'm i'm living for the novelty of life now you know um god may have given up on me i don't know but uh, I'm just going to continue to do what I do, and I'm going to live every minute to the fullest. And that's kind of the way I'm doing this. And so the video that I'm presenting you to here is me living life to the fullest. Okay, if you ever see the numbers 111, or if you see a, a succession of numbers, if you've taken statistics, you know that it's statistically impossible to see things repeatedly as much as I do. And, um, so it's, it's a sign to you that you're kind of not really, even if you're in the same world, they're probably moving things and distracting people and trying and, you know, possibly taking, uh, time and like repeating it, like take, taking me out of it and then putting somebody in there that's on, 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 uh, autopilot and everybody sees that guy that they don't see me. Uh, they respond to me, but that somehow it never gets back to back to home, and there's no actual great response to it. Um, there might be a great response to that, and that may be the real reality that I just created my own hell. But um, I'm just the thing is, is that if, if I thought I was going to go crazy, I would be able to reason my way through it, and so knowing that it, it would be very hard for them to make me go actually crazy. I would actually be able to reason it out. And there are a lot of people in the world that have their own conspiracy theories, and you've heard them, and it sounds kind of crazy to them. There are things in the Bible that says um, that if you throw Jesus on the cross so many times, eventually God just gives up on you. And it's the truth. You, you can't, there is a point at which God just doesn't go any further, and he just lets you do your own thing and he doesn't mess with you and he just lets you go on and he ignores you and it's called hell that hell is a germanic word it just basically means that god's he, he's not watching he's not looking at you he's ignoring you basically and in hell um basically satan does whatever the hell he wants to with you 
um, but he can't kill you. You have to kill yourself. And so what he does is he, he'll try to distract you. He'll try to remind you that you're going to hell and he'll do all this stuff. And it's interesting for him to see if you will respond to, to the reality the way that you used to and if, and, and to watch you go crazy. And I'm, and I'm just kind of like, well, I'll just, um, if this is the same reality, if the things are just modified, if they're just capturing things um, from people or being able to distract them from ever like really actually accepting it, or if it's a parallel, if it's a parallel dimension, then it's, I'm really screwing myself up. But if it is, um, and, and you could think of it this way, um, why do so many people accept putting tattoos on their body? Um, that would be very destructive. You know, you think that you could put something on your body that you just don't want there tomorrow. Um, why do so many people do it? And I think that's a sign is that it, this putting excessive amounts of tattoos is really kind of a sign to me that I'm not in the world I used to be in because people tended to care more about their bodies in the world years ago than they do now um they tend to and so it's kind of saying to me that um something's wrong with the world and you know we get presidents that are stupid and grab women's bushes while the christians don't care and i mean that and and you see people on their cell phone all the time you can talk to people you can pass information on it never gets home they're so distracted by their real reality of their reality that they don't really know anything else is going on in the world and so it's possible that either i'm on the outside of everything that is in the world or i'm in another universe altogether and um so i come to little little things here and there that i start to notice that say why didn't I notice this? This is obvious. This this, this wouldn't fly um, in my in my previous existence, and and you know it's possible that I died sometime in the past, and um, everything that's going on now is just um, I've just taken for granted, but would never have flown and wouldn't have lasted as long as it has. You know, pornography on. The internet um, certain things just wouldn't have lasted as long as they have had I been in a real had I been in the world I was um, people are just letting things fly because they're just they just don't care and you probably thought well this is the way the world's always been have you ever thought stopped to think that this may just be a parallel reality and that the the, the that if I had made the right choices I would have ended up in another reality so it's like a pachinko machine the ball each decision we make determines which uh, reality we end up in and if you go too far to the wrong way eventually you end up in a parallel reality that just doesn't make any sense that um is deceptive it is a lie basically and and that's kind of the area where god just kind of ignores you and he pays more attention to the stuff that's fallen in his direction, you see. And Satan's over there just saying, come on, people, over here on this side. Go to this side of the, the pachinko machine. Uh, this, is, this is hell over here because God just doesn't care about this side of the pachinko machine. So that's kind of the way I think of things. And, you know, and I have lots of great ideas, but I don't see them out there. I don't see the solutions. Even if I put the videos up on YouTube, they don't get that much views. And when they do get views, it's usually by somebody who's um, probably doesn't even spend enough time to like even care or be concerned about it. If this takes off, then it will be because Satan has made it so. He's just decided, okay, dude, you're getting one through, and this one's really going to hit the crowd. And everybody's going to be talking about this. And, and it's just going to go apeshit everywhere. And I'm going to go, well, then I'm going to throw some great information in here. And we'll see if that made it in there as well. Um, so anyhow, that was that was the idea. Um, what was I going to talk about originally? Uh, uh, 
Well, I, if you saw my other videos, me talking about how we could fix the identity theft problem by basically actually representing people by things other than numeric IDs, by using actual uh, attributes like uh, eye cut, like retinal scans, fingerprints. It's not just one thing. You use them all together. You don't use one thing. You use a statistical. It's a statistical thing, okay? It, the statistics that a record or somebody else's record is when the amount of identifying information isn't in favor of. So it's kind of like the the likelihood that this is the this these two records are related to each other is the the amount of of identifying information agrees on both records to a great degree that they have the same blood type they were at the same address they um had um they had the same fingerprint i mean fingerprints like an obvious one um all of these attributes these things can help you to identify one record as being like another record and then that having more information is actually better in being able to identify you than having one piece of information one piece of information makes it ambiguous and so it makes it so ambiguous that um, anybody could make the the correlation between the records. And this is the this is how we create a peer to peer model of of correlating records across institutions. The technology exists; it's been here for twenty years. And the reason why it hasn't been incorporated into the way we do things is because I'm in hell. And so, so that was one idea. Um, ideas I have about how, how to make money. Uh, uh, other things is that it, um, you can see that gambling is really taken off and people are gambling a lot. Um, keep in mind that all a gambling application is, is just two pieces of code. It is a random number generator and a inequality and a conditional. That's all a gambling program is. And people who are willing to throw their money at these little programs that are two lines long that anybody could write is another sign that we're living in hell or I'm in a hell. I'm not in the world. Um, I could, if I wanted to make money and anybody, I, I dare everybody on the internet, you can make as much money as you want in gambling. You make the gambling system yourself. This is how you do it. You create programs that have only two lines of code in them that's a random number generator. Actually, it has a little more than that, a seed, a seed value. You put the seed value and you set it for the time or you set it for something that's kind of random. Then you get, and then the random number generator is a hash function. You seed that to create the random numbers. And the, the reason why you seed it with something that's, that's changing is because um, random number generators are designed to produce the same values every time they they are called so if you call them 10 times they're going to produce the same numbers for that one seed value that they're given the minute they execute the next time the program uh executes if the seed value is the same it'll produce the same exact numbers that it did the previous time so it's a pseudo uh random number generator it's not a random number generator so feeding it a different set of it, Every time you call a random number generator, if you want it guarantee that it's going to be completely random, you seed it with the time. And every time you call it, um, it changes It changes what numbers it's out. You know, you can do it like maybe every 10 or 20 numbers, you seed it with the, with the time or something. And uh, if, it's, if it's always doing it the same interval, um, you probably don't want to do that, but the thing is, is, is that you seed it with something that's kind of random, and the random number generator is going to produce more random numbers, and then the likelihood that you're going to produce the um, the likelihood that you're going to produce the the same numbers every time is that it means that people are not going to be able to cheat your system, but um, if they know that how many times the random number generator has executed, they'll be able to determine what the next number is, uh, assuming you never changed your seed number. Um, that's how to write a really bad gambling program. A good gambling program, you seed it with something that's pseudo-random, 
and um, uh, that doesn't make sense. You seed it with something that changes, and then you get your random number, and then you use an if condition, which basically says, if this is true, then do this. And you do that with an inequality. You say, if it is between between this number and that number, then do this. And that's basically the entire world of gambling and software is all in that sphere of those three lines. The seed the number generator with your time, ran, uh, pick a random number and then do an if condition on top of that. That's your gambling software right there. All your predict, predict, predict uh, all your software used to pre predict what is going to, pre the numbers are gonna be produced. Might be statistical, but it's bullshit because your random number generator is equiprobable and there's nothing, the collection of data or anything is going to tell you about what is going to be produced as a number. It's all bullshit and it's ethical bullshit. And so it's, um, it's up to you and your ethics to determine whether or not you really want to produce a gambling software. And Satan's probably saying, dude, you're going to hell. Why are you not going out and making gambling software? Everybody's just going to, you know, none of this is going to amount to much of anything. And I'll say, dude, you know, I'm living for the novelty. I like the, the idea that it might actually amount to something. So I'm having fun. You're having fun. You're having fun seeing that I'm responding to, to things and, and, and it's not going to amount to anything. Nobody's going to watch it. And I'm, I'm saying uh, it's fun for me to at least talk about the subject and then throw it out there. We'll see who, you know, we'll see if it amounts to something. It may be something or maybe nothing. Um, I, uh, you can just kind of like keep people from like actually seeing my videos. That would be fine. I don't really want to make any money. I really don't care who sees these videos. Um, so, anyhow. So that's my website and plugging that. And uh, this is where you go if you want to see lots of music videos. I love 80s, 70s, 60s music videos. Pretty much anything. I used it for music exploration for myself. So it actually means something more to me than it really does to anybody else. But I figure as, hey, as well as I have that thing there, somebody has somewhere to go if they really are sick of YouTube. They can go here and watch music videos and not be have some artificial intelligence to determine what it is that they want to see. Um, and the, and the, the other thing is if you're watching this and you're logged in to YouTube, the AI is going to be confused because they won't be able to determine what you actually like. Um, because they're going to be seeing stuff coming from the embed and thinking that that's stuff that you're actively choosing to watch. And I've programmed the embed to watch lots of videos, but, you know, from a certain era. So if you want to program it to show you 70s, 80s music videos, you just leave that thing going and it will probably never show you anything else it wants to show you. It'll show you stuff centric around 70s, 80s music videos because that's what they're doing is what you do on YouTube determines what you see and because the reason why that is is because they got AI algorithms trying to learn something about your viewing habits and then they're going to use that on you. And, um, and um, also Satan is... A, the technology is Satan's uh, tool, and uh, it's his way of getting into our world. And if we ever have a singularity, if we ever have an AI being that actually is able to think, it will be what Satan's way of getting on to getting into our world and starting to be present in 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 the physical space. It is the the place where his soul will be able to enter into our world. So, us, you know, seeing that man that has 666 written on their head and all that, that forget that. Think of it this way. The singularity will be Satan if it ever comes into existence. And so, if God's got any amount of control and he puts this message out and people watch this, um, then they will, they will understand, but maybe not. 
um, deep faking. Oh, deep faking. This is the guy idea I had. Um, deep faking is going to take off if it is real. If this is real, real technology. If this is not something that Satan's putting before me to kind of just say, you know, this is something silly and uh, it it doesn't really work. And if you ever really figured it out, then it, you would we'd have to throw you something else. But this is this is a bone that we're the bowl we're throwing. We're thinking you're going to go after. And so let's see you go, boy. Um, so, okay, um, deep faking. What it is supposedly is some AI technology. Nobody knows how it really, really works. Um, supposedly it's some technology that's well understood. And I don't know how it works. And I think that it, and in my idea of the, the things is that if I ever learned how deep faking actually worked, if I actually deep faked, it would probably be the end of the sort of reality that um, is kind of still interesting, but might it might be the same say, okay, that's the end of the game. Um, we're just going to let you have it, you know, just throw you into the depths of hell at this point. And, you know, the novelty has been lost. So I just will not do any deep faking, but I'll have ideas. So I'll say, these are deep faking ideas. If this technology actually does what it says, um, then here's what we could do with deep faking. We could put all the actors who can't get jobs in Hollywood, we could put them to work. It's easy. All you do is you take all the dead actors, you deep fake their faces, you program for their faces, and then you go and you make movies with those old dead actors that you long to see. I mean, the the you could see you could have Marilyn Monroe and and James Dean in a movie together, and you could probably put Laurel Hardy in there, and all of them be completely youthful, and 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 you know we got all this film footage we could use to defake their faces, and why not do it? And um, so we could put all those old actors in there. You just get a lot of impersonators. All the actors that can't get work, all they have to do now is just find some actor that they can impersonate that their body type is compatible with and uh then they do that and they make that their whole life's goal is to be that actor and um they become it's like jack nicholson but it would be somebody you know how jack nicholson always just had to be jack nicholson he didn't really have to be anybody else um the beauty of deep faking is is that everybody that doesn't have the capacity to be able to be uh, employed in Hollywood now can just deep fake their face and be in whatever movie they want to be, be whoever they want to be, and and uh, and you can have that studio put anywhere in the world. We could have it in India. We could have people in India doing impersonations of old dead American actors making a lots of money. Um, making movies that never would have been made um, in the yesterday, made now with those old actors' faces, with the uh, old actors, you know, it's great. Deep faking would be great, and for all the people that still have the um, still have the estates of those ed old actors, royalties, you know, royalties. Come on, you would be collecting on the likeness of the old actor. Nobody, it would be undis, indisputable that people are deep faking um, your, your old um, grandfather or grandmother and who would be, if they were alive today, would just be, they would, they would be freaked out of their gourd that their likeness was being used everywhere. Um, in countries where there's any amount of democracy, a uh, force that people who do this have to pay royalties to the people that own the estate or um, or abide by their wishes to either let those people be in the movies or not. Um, but they would be flattered if people were doing impersonations of Charlie Chaplin and Charlie Chan and all those guys. And, you know, um, it's it's a no-brainer. That's perfect for what deepfaking would be would be, you know, if you're going to use AI for something. Um, I probably said to the CEOs that uh, keep in mind that the, the first thing AI is going to replace is decision makers. And you're going to say, um, why? And I say, well, because there's more data on decision makers than there is. Well, 
there is a lot of data on people who are at the bottom doing uh, menial jobs and you know things like that but why would you get why would you make a robot to do something that somebody does at the lowest level um, because it requires a lot of dexterity and things like that why would you get a robot to do that why not get the AI to make decisions you know like just like the the AI that was used in go to make decisions about play a game that's decision making why not get AI to make decisions and the CEOs start to see the see what this AI is going to replace and it is them that AI is going to replace they are going to get replaced by AI the creditors are going to get the wise idea to replace the CEOs the the presidents the CFOs the CEO I mean the the CMOs are I mean all those people see all the people that represent the top of the, they're making the decisions in the corporation will get replaced just as the um, combustion vehicles are going to get replaced by electric cars the heads the head decision making entity of every corporation is going to get replaced by AI and that's who you're working towards and it's um, we're creating our own hell and um, we're we're bringing Satan's soul into our world and so if this video takes off then um, it will be a, not of any interest for Satan to put it out there and if he does throw it out there then he knows that he's screwed and that's the reason why I'm putting this video in here is because I know it's not going to get views and but at least it's got the novelty that I'm at least putting some information forth that um, might be interesting if it ever did get around and people saw it and you know we could talk about how we're going to deal with AI if we're going to put an amygdala inside the AI to make it actually concerned about stuff um, but I'll just continue to do my thing and uh, be kind of the intellectual crazy person out here that uh, kind of realizes that he's probably in hell but um, it's novelty you know it's interesting to see what the what the uh, puppy will do for you guys and uh, and if it really is not real then it won't do anything and it's great it, it's um, I mean it's not great but at least um, I can I can do crazy stuff and not ever have to be responsible for it you know and and so there's like saying well this is really not what we signed up for is somebody that we can't like really manipulate and I said yeah I'm I'm kind of some of those one of those guys that pretty hard to manipulate you're gonna you're probably gonna come up with something that that's going to make it more fun but I'm sure you're getting so sick and tired of torturing people the normal way by just putting a knife in them or you know twisting a knife or doing something of the sort um, I think they're at the level where they really want to psychologically torture people now and um, and with me it's just very difficult because they just can't get what they want out of this guy but it's still very interesting and it's I'm sure it's kind of for them it's kind of just something interesting kind of makes the day go fly by they can go over to my little sandbox and look at me and say uh, what is he up to now oh he's doing oh wow that's far out you know that this is really kind of outside of the box this isn't what the usual soul does um, inside of a sand in our sandboxes that we put people in um, or little cells um, oh yeah oh the other idea um, if you ever see one 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 uh, four ones together um, that's a sign that you're in hell. Um, so if it, if people watch this and they see the one one one, um, that's a sign you're in hell. And it's uh, I call it Satan's pitchfork. Um, I don't know if that's what he thinks it is, but um, and if you see four oh four, I'm a web developer, and you see four oh four, it means not found. So basically, if you're a Christian, and you see four oh four, it means you're not found. Christ isn't really concerned about you. Okay. Um, there are things in the Bible that say if you sin enough that eventually they're God's just going to ignore you. It also says if you believe in something and you fail to believe the truth and you believe in something else, then he'll put forth push forth a great delusion.
towards you. And you just look for delusion in the Bible, you'll find it. If I'm in a parallel reality where the Bible never ever said that, then that's probably um, a good reason, you know. Uh, but that's probably the reason why people should know the Bible um, before they ever get in hell, so they can know when they're they're kind of not in in the world, so to say, anymore. That things they knew. This is another way you'd be able to tell that you're in hell is things that you knew to be true are now kind of wrong and and you go there's there's something wrong here you know like uh i used to think that um who was it uh david byrne was gay and evidently he's not uh i used to think brian ferry was gay and evidently he's not and so there there's certain things and there in when I was born, I remember there was Starman. There was a guy in Starman whose name was Kiernan. Evidently, there that guy's not there. That is no longer true. So there are certain things that I remember about the world that don't that aren't true anymore. Um, I, it isn't those things, but it's little things that kind of like throw you off, and you go, "Wait one second, what? How can this fly? You know, and uh, or this doesn't make any sense. This." The, these are character differences. Like if I listen to Howard Jones now, he doesn't sound like the Howard Jones I remember from my youth. The Howard Jones I remember from my youth uh, that you would listen to on um, interviews was talking. He would talk um, very kindly and stuff. And this guy sounds like a, a complete um, ego-centric bastard, you know, And when I hear Howard Jones now. And there's something wrong. So... It's basically you come to the reality that things are just not quite right. And if and if you see one 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 a lot, if you see a succession of numbers, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, it's basically the the, the demons are sitting there and they're waiting for you to just finally real realize that you're no longer there. You're no longer in it. You're no longer in the game. You're not really gonna have any kind of uh of per, you're not gonna be able to make a change in the world and um and they're just basically waiting for you to kill yourself or waiting for you to die and um n nothing you can do um for the lord is going to mount to anything because you failed the test and um they put me they put you through all these tests you know and then they try to make you fail at a number of things and if you fail at them, then God just ignores you, and then they just have their way, your, their way with you. Now, um, I used to think that the world was um, really, really was not controlled so much, but that, they, that there was actual decisions. The, the thing is, is that no matter what, God's always going to win. And so... Um, if you're on God's side, you're going to end up in the winning troop, but you'll probably be in a parallel reality to everybody else. And the reality that my loved ones ended up in is completely someplace else. And I know that when I make certain decisions, I make some outright decisions like that, say I'm not really interested in following Christ or something. All my, all the people around me don't, they just go, okay. That's fine. And then they go the other way. And I'm like, and that would not fly. Usually what they would do is they would probably be really bugged by it and want me to leave the house and go live someplace else. And that's, that's another sign to me is that it's really, they're just, the demons are just kind of gradually tuning this as I go through this, this reality, things are gradually getting tuned and they're just trying to get it to me that, uh, this is all fake. And, uh, so I'm going to put the video out there and it's not going to, nobody's going to see it. It's not going to, it's not going to be a big deal. And I was just like, say, okay, you know? And so, um, but I, I want to at least put my ideas out there and I'm just going to leave them out and we'll see if it gets some views. Now, if it takes off, it goes crazy, then I'll probably take it down because then, but then I might not. It might be one of those videos that I just leave out there, and if somebody comes back to me, I go, "Oh, I was delusional that day. You know, I, I'm, I'm schizophrenic. This is like something that one of my alter egos said today. You know, but now that I said that, I can't say that anymore either. But uh, um, I'm not schizophrenic, and 
if they if they ever like literally put me in hell and still and I still have the capacity to even think, um, it's going to be this mind that I'm going to be doing it with the one who just doesn't think that they can ever actually be uh, that they can actually ever go crazy, and it will <laughs> and, and they'll have to find either they'll have to find up something that or, or they'll just have to just outright torture me the usual way and that is sticking knives in them but eventually you would think that somebody would probably just get used to it after a while and then it just doesn't see i'm sure they're just bored to the they're just bored out the wazoo in doing the usual things that kind of give them pleasure and just making people um tortured um and then the guys like me that that have these thoughts, hey, you know, we could use these guys and put these guys in other realities, and make it do our bidding to like create um, kind of fake worlds so that we those people that those souls that ended up going too far, we can put them in there, and then this guy can like be determining how we could torture this person. And so I'm thinking you know, down the road, if it is, does end up that way, I'm like, why throw me away whenever I could be really useful to you guys in helping you to determine how to torture other people and, um, not, not physical torture, but intellectual torture. And so that's probably what they're going to do with me, uh, eventually, but they just need to get it through to me that, um, that, um, I'm basically not going to be do, be able to do the Christ thing. I'm still going to pick up trash. I'm still going to treat people nicely. I just, you know, there isn't much, um, there's just not much there for me, reason for me to go that direction anymore because obviously it is not the same world. Uh, it, it is it is a world where God is not really here, okay? Um, and then all the Christians will say, no, he really is still here. Maybe if you're in if if you're in a reality where I'm at in the same reality, I, he's not here. But if you're in a parallel reality and somehow they're mingling with my reality, maybe um, he's there, he's with you, and he will be involved with me through you, but he's not directly involved with me. And um, I think if there's anything that happens to that degree is really just these demons trying to see if they can make it fly again, if they can get me to fly as a Christian again, and then see how far I will fly up before I start to fall again, okay? And so they like to see things, like, take off. Um, they like to see shit fly, so so to say. And um, if the shit doesn't, if it keeps, if it doesn't get off the ground, if it just sits there, and or if it's going off in a different direction than something it it may be the it may be entertaining it might be something they can stick on demon tv for all the other demons to watch to see somebody who's actually kind of outside of the box of being tortured in the same way that they expect people to be tortured in in that kind of in you know and i'm just like hey dude you know i'm gonna be on your american idol your your um demon tv and and you guys can like really have something to do that's more interesting than torturing people all the time something you know some spectacle some guy that's doing something a little different from everybody else and i'm sure they probably got many guys in the past that have done the same things that i've done but you know it's it, it's a kind if if it really is not the way i think it is it, if you think about it, it's a kind of a science fiction. It's kind of a, not science fiction, it's a kind of a fiction, okay? And so it's kind of like watching um, a really interesting story. It's it's somebody who's really kind of trying to think outside of the box and trying to explain uh, the craziness of the world, and they're doing it in a way that's kind of entertaining, and it's possible that I don't get any views, but I'm probably getting lots of views in the demon world. And so those demons have got, you know, they're like, dude, you're a celebrity. We all know about you because you just, you're, you're like the one soul that really gets it, you know. And I'm thinking, hey, that, that would be, that would be something else, you know. And so you guys, something to keep you entertained until the, until God throws you guys into the, fiery pet which nobody wants to think about you know 
is getting thrown in that lake of fire, you know, for eternity. And I'm, I'm like, dude, I get it. You know, let's have some fun. You know, let's, uh, let's, uh, postpone that, that inevitable demise of all of us guys and, uh, have some fun with the souls and we can, we can, you know, have, you know, I can think that I can see how that would work, you know? And so, but I don't see myself as actually doing, of going the crazy route of going out and killing people and do things like that, which doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm, it's not in me to do things like that. It's not into me to cheat people. It's not in me to, to go out and make lots of money off of people. Um, the, the kind of problems I have are more personal problems. So they're not world problems. It's not problems I have with the world. It's personal problems. And, um, I don't, I, I, although I have problems with government, um, I can understand that the world's screwed up and the reason why it's screwed up and the, you know, the, all this stuff is there. It's just, I'm just like a cat and there's all these little toys I could play with and they put them out there and they just want to see if I'll go through the tubes or if I'll play with the cat, with the cat toy or, or, you know, this guy looks like an enemy. And so I'll start attacking him and they'll say, dude, you're attacking a ball, you know, with some, with some strings around it, you know, so they, it keeps you distracted. And we're all very enticed by, you know, your playful activity. You're very interesting. And so that's what I'm getting from them is, is that I'm kind of like a little, I'm like a pet and I'm just really kind of being very interesting to them. I'm like, okay, that's, that's fine. I'll, I'll do that. And so just keep, keep putting them out there and I'll, and I'll keep attacking, um, you know, Trump and, you know, as if the guy who got dropped by his wife and then made it really great by selling water, which is what he did whenever he was down and out after Ivanka or, or um, after he left Ivanka, she kind of left him kind of penniless or something. He went out and sold uh, designer water. And so the guy that sold designer water, and he's got all these other things, that, you know, and then he's got the Christians that voted for him and, uh, and got some guy in the 700 club saying, you're going to hell if you don't vote for Trump. And I'm like, this is like all fantastic little toys you demon guys are throwing me, you know. Uh, it's it's fun to, to, to attack stuff like this. And the novelty, and then I can go off and play Minecraft all I want and, you know, take my mind off of it and say, you know. Uh, but every now and then they get something in like the last, the other night that I, I went into a website and I was going to promote my web, my website. And it was something that, it was a website probably... If I if I was on and people saw me, they would probably be really dismayed by um, me being there. But um, I was going to throw up a few advertisements for my website, and and then they they knocked me down because I was um, because I was spamming. I would they caught me for spamming. I only put two ads in there, and they caught me for spamming. They banned me for spamming, and I got really upset over that. And then I thought to myself. Oh, I just gave one to the demons, you know, the one for the demons, you know, and I'm like, oh man, I, and I, and then I spent the rest of the night playing Minecraft and saying, you know, blowing it off and saying they got the, the thing that they can still get with me is that in my, my thoughts, my subliminal, um, subliminally that they, they can really get me. Um, they can't really get me if I'm actually thinking about what it is that I'm doing. Um, if I, I'll get off on a tangent and then I'll start to do something and I'll like, uh, and then, you know, if this I'm actually putting my thought into, but if I was just like, Hey, I can promote my site by going to this site and then putting in my, my URLs or something like that, and people will probably, uh, go to it. But, uh, and I've determined that I will never collect statistics or information or any kind of collection of anything about my websites to see if anybody is actually viewing it. I, I, YouTube forces me to know that nobody watches my content, but um, my own website, I don't collect any kind of stats. I don't care. Uh, and I put the content in, maybe people see it, maybe they don't. 
but I see it and the the fantasy of it is attractive to me and so that's um, why I plug it is because is it's like I'm I'm living the fantasy of like being the VJ or being the guy who runs the MTV simulation and that's what this thing does what it does is it takes uh, music videos from YouTube and it I mean it and it puts them in playlists plays them perpetually and I'm figuring out different ways I can play them I got so many ideas of how I can do this it will be so interesting to try all these various things hopefully the demons will let me live long enough maybe 10, 10 20 years until the singularity comes and hell we have hell on earth and Satan is able to get through into my brain and keep me from dying and if he so decides to make me live eternally in hell or maybe he just makes me a dungeon master for whatever, whatever little dungeons he wants to throw new souls into. I I would be all up for that. I you know I could see myself doing that. And if I knew that I was going to hell, then or I am in hell, then I would be all for it. You know, um, because what choice do I have? You know, and so the the thing is, is that I'll be your dog. I'll be your puppy. And I'll be a really loyal puppy because uh, I was born uh, in, in 1970 and that was the dog that according to Chinese calendar that's the dog year so I'm very loyal I'm a loyal if you can get me uh, to be on your side and uh, uh, then I'm very loyal so um, but the thing is is that it's really going to be very difficult because I'm a Christian or I was a Christian that to get me to be aligned with actually just deceiving people outright um it's going to be very difficult and you're going to have to kind of remove that programming from my brain once you put me into the dungeon master position so it, this is a kind of a comic fiction that i've it, this either this video that's going up to youtube it either ends up being um actual truth in in the real world um either way it's going to end up being comic fiction so if it is true what i'm saying is true then it's going to be entertaining to the demons um if it's not true then it's going to be comic fiction in in the world and so this will be kind of something that I will probably be a great meme for everybody else on the YouTube. There are probably lots of people on YouTube that are doing this. I don't watch enough of YouTube to really even know. I've never watched American Idol. Um, all this stuff that's out there is junk TV to me. I don't watch TV anymore. And so the novelty to me is just the possibility that the world could like actually ever mimic or mirror what's in my head. Um, if it goes the opposite direction, it, it, it's not lost. I'm, I'm not lost on, I understand it's, it's, it's flawed and it will always be flawed. And even if we fix it now, um, tomorrow it will get flawed because we'll be dead and someone else will be running with the ball and they will run the wrong direction. And it will always be the case. Um, there will always be hungry people. There will always be homeless people. There will always be and the reason why is because nobody really cares about anybody else. The only the people who actually care are the people that get plucked out by God and get taken to heaven. You know, the, the, those are the people that have passed the test and they figured it out. The rest of them end up in this flawed existence that we're in. And, um, and we can possibly think about how it is that we're going to serve Satan. And so that's, um, that's kind of, the the thing is is and it says in the bible it says if you don't end up being with one you want to be with the other you can't sit on the fence you're going to have to make a decision are you going to be with god or not god okay because if if you choose not to be god god you have to consider how it's going to be on the other chance because satan's you know the best there is um it when god is not when when you don't have god the best there is is Satan, you know, because um, he was the greatest creation that God ever made. Um, uh, he went wrong, but he's the greatest creation that God ever made. And he, that means that he probably has, it probably is the case that Satan only failed once. And we failed millions of times, okay? And 
that says that he probably has all the morals that God has. He's just making sure that God doesn't get the upper hand um, in in the world where God's at. And then when God passes stuff over to Satan, then Satan kind of has his own little world there to play with. And he can either torture if you're still like resisting, or he can say, okay, now it's, now uh, you wouldn't do what you do, do with God. Um, you can do with, um, we're, we're going to play the same game here, but it's me, not God. And uh, we're going to play it uh, this way. And um, you're still going to probably have to do the good stuff, but you're doing it to a different God, you know. And so this is also kind of, I'm playing devil's advocate, you know, but I'm playing it to a, a degree that no Christian has probably ever gone to a devil's advocate position. And um, it's a fiction. And it would be a fiction in, a real, in, in, in the other reality, but if it really is the way I think it is, then, hey, you know, I'm, I, I have no choice. I wouldn't, I didn't really have any choice the other way. And then, and this is a different thing, place where I don't really have any choice. But if I did have a choice, then I, I know what I could feel. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm Lex Luthor and it's like Superman two. And you got those three other um, guys around and you're sitting there saying, I'll take that one little country. If you, if you don't have to deal with it. And it's not, you can't do that, Lex. Not even Lex could have done that, you know, um, in that movie. I would, and the way I put it is I said, you know, all else fails. And you really don't want to see any or have anything to do with me. Um, then, uh, then put me in a perpetual Minecraft forever. That would be nice for me. That would be, that would be like heaven and hell, you know, um, to be in a perpetual Minecraft forever. And because it's an infinite universe and there's tons of monsters and there's tons of things to do and create, I could be off in that universe and I'd be perfectly fine. And, uh, I mean, I might feel the things like if I actually fall in lava, I actually feel pain, um, of being in lava. But to me, uh, considering that this might actually be the reality that, that I'm going to hell, um, it would probably be really nice if I could just be in a Minecraft hell where it was just Minecraft for, for all eternity. I would be fine with that, you know? Um, so I've just kind of put forth that idea. Um, if it's not that, then I end up being a dungeon master for some kind of dungeon game where you're throwing in all these Christians and, you know, I would, and all those demons, you know, all the, I'm not saying I'm a demon, but all those demons, as it says in the Bible, they all know, um, everything in the Bible, you know, and how you think they got to be that way? Probably because they started out like me, uh, reading Bible and trying to do it and not really being very successful at it. Um, so we've got a lot of Christians coming and we need to, uh, we're going to have really good ways of really specifically torturing each and every one of them. But, um, uh, it, it, it's really a lot of fun is it not guys, um, to kind of torture the Christians. So, um, because they're obviously not doing the right thing, at least not in this world, but even in the world I used to be in, I kind of came to the realization they really weren't getting it, you know, and there was that guy, Billy Sunday back there was converting people left and right. And before Billy Sunday, when they were converting people, they would have this, this little seminar and they would kind of say, okay, do you think you really can do it? Then look back at your past. Could you do it? Were you able to do it back then? If you can, then maybe you can do it now. Um, you can really devote your whole life to, to, um, worshiping God. And, um, then Billy Sunday came into it and said, Hey, I can turn this into a kind of a, um, a big old sales spiel, you know, and we, okay, everybody's going to get saved. So I'm going to just convert everybody, you know, and just throw them in it. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you really read the Bible or what, you know, uh, once you're baptized, you're saved and, you know, go with it. And, uh, and, you know, it may be the case that they don't end up reading or they, they fall away anyhow. And then they just end up 
kind of in this kind of environment that I'm in. So if you're seeing 111, um, if you're seeing those numbers and you see it every day, it's not a good thing. It's not angel numbers or anything like that. It is Satan who's basically telling you that uh, you have a choice. You can either kill yourself or continue on doing what you're doing, but what you do is going to have zero effect on the, the, work, the reality because basically you're in a cell in hell, and it's basically a sandbox. It's like what we would do to AI if it was to, to do things that we didn't want it to do. We'd put it in a sandbox. Why we put certain applications inside of a controlled environment because we were afraid that it would have any effect on the rest of our environment. Um, we put it in a sandbox and we execute it. You know, if you look at cloud computing, they put programs inside of these these um, hypervisors and they run, but we know that they're not going to be able to access anything else, maybe just stuff on the internet, but they're not actually going to get outside of the box. And the AI that we train in this world, those guys are kind of like our own little pets, um, but we're probably AI. And, uh, and we're probably being trained in our own sandboxes in... Envir virtual environments, even though if, if we're able to create AI and AI is to be like us, how are, how is it, uh, po would it not be the case that we're already in it to begin with and we're just recreating? It's just a recursive step that we're creating something that was, that created us, that created them, that created the thing before, that this is just a recursive artificial intelligence um, algorithm that we're we're a part of and we're being tested to see what can really get outside of the box and actually be a part of the 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 world in the area where they need us okay uh, so that's another kind of uh, kind of an and now I'm just gonna throw this up on YouTube and if nobody sees it then I'll know hey at least it's out there I said it, it's up there. If people view it, great. It's probably getting watched by demons. It might not be, be watched by demons. And and I have people coming by me all the time in the store where I work um, saying, you know, really love you. And, you know, they're really happy. And I don't know them. And all I can imagine is, is that there's demons that are taken in, that, that are going coming in and they're just kind of like thanking me for being very entertaining, you know, and I'm saying, right, right on. And I'll say, yeah, nice. And then my mind is saying, demon, yeah, okay, cool, yeah. And keeping it entertaining, keeping it real, guys, because um, uh, real is not any good anymore, is it? So here we go. Uh, 